Hi and welcome to this look at the January weather prospects. I took this photograph in December 2009 and that winter went on to be the coldest since 1978-79. There were further heavy snowfalls during January in much of the country. Now it is quite chilly at the moment but can we expect a repeat of scenes like these as we head through the coming month? I'll start by taking a look at the picture across Europe and the North Atlantic. Here we go, 12 GMT, Saturday the 2nd of January. We've got high pressure centre to the west and it's leaving the UK under quite a cold northerly airstream. There are bits of rain, sleet and snow around, mostly but not only in coastal counties. If I now play the sequence, let's see what happens in the short term. I'm, here we go through Sunday and into Monday. I'll pause it at 18 GMT on Monday the 4th of January. The key thing to note is by then winds have turned into more of an easterly direction and they will be quite strong across much of the country. They lead to an increasing risk of showers in central and eastern Britain particularly. Some of those could be falling as sleet or snow, especially inland and over higher ground. Close to the coast, they will probably be falling mainly as rain. There's also a chance of longer spells of rain or sleet in southeastern England. Resuming the sequence to see how things then transpire. Just pausing it here at 03 GMT, Thursday the 7th of January. What we can see at this point is a band of rain, sleet and snow associated with an area of low pressure beginning to uh, push southwards across Scotland into Northern Ireland. The, the timing of this feature is uncertain at this range. It is something to keep an eye on though. It could potentially bring in a period of rain, sleet and snow southwards. Just resuming this sequence, you hopefully be able to see that as it heads southwards, it looks like fragmenting and becoming lighter. As I say though, it does at least suggest the chance of some, uh, some rain, sleet or snow pushing down across all of the country during Thursday the 7th, Friday the 8th possibly. Once that clears through, we remain in a cold, northerly or northeasterly airstream potentially as I say the details at this stage do uh, are, are subject to significant change uh, but it looks like it, it looks like high pressure is going to remain centered to the west of the UK and keep the generally cold theme in place as we head into the middle third of January. That leads me into a look at the 16 day ensemble graphs to see how things could play out. This one is for London. Now across the top half it shows temperatures at about 1500 metres above sea level. Uh, they give a good indication of the air mass above us. The key points here I've annotated um, until about the 11th of January there's good agreement. Virtually all of the runs in this ensemble model keep the 850 HPA temperatures below the 30 year average. However, as we head through the middle third of January, the spread increases. You can see some, some of the runs take temperatures up to plus five Celsius, some of them dip down to minus 10. The mean of all the runs is trending upwards towards a 30 year average. It's very difficult to read too much uh, detail into this, but what it suggests is the likelihood of uh, temperatures probably beginning to trend back towards a 30 year average. The cold may well be uh, may well be breaking through the middle third of January, at least in the southern half of the UK. Across a lot across the bottom here, we've got the uh, precipitation forecasts and the snow row, which shows how many runs on a given day are forecasting snow to fall for this location. And, and we can see there's quite a number. The maximum value the snow row can take on any one point is 33. 
Here in the London area, it reaches a maximum of 27 on the, around about the 6th or the 7th of January. Um, so, and, and it stays quite high on a number of other days. So at least it suggests the possibility of some falling snow in the southern half of the country. I'll skip across to the Cardiff plot. It's very, very similar. Um, the uncertainty increases as we head through the middle third of January. Before then, there's good agreement for upper air temperatures to remain below the 30 year average. Snow row along the bottom looks quite similar to London. It could actually be a little bit lower um, the, uh, on a number of days. The reason I would suspect for that is because we've got an east an easterly flow, which means uh, which means precipitation is more likely in central and eastern parts of of Britain rather than um, in Wales and other western areas. If I jump up to the next one, which is Glasgow, um, again it's it's on the precipitation front. It's mainly dry in the short term um, until about the seventh or the eighth of January. Reasoning is much the same there. Um, that's because obviously we're in the northwest of the UK here and on the easterly flow which has been forecast uh, western parts of the country are, are best place to uh, keep the dry conditions. On the top half I think what's notable here is that 850 HPA temperatures remain below the 30 year average right through the period. They may, may, may be just dip up, uh, maybe just head up a little bit towards the very end um, but what this point, what this is really suggesting to me is that if it does turn milder, it's likely that the milder air is going to be pushing up from the southwest, and and it may it may be struggling to reach northern parts of the UK. Having said that, there is quite a big spread showing on this chart, so it, it could it could be that mild air even reaches the northern parts of the country. It's 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 very very uncertain at this stage. Just to add a little to that, I'll show you the ensemble plot for London from the ECM model. The previous ones were from the uh, GFS, GEFS model, which is which is running North America. The ECM model is essentially the European equivalent. Um, and what we can see there is good agreement on it staying pretty cold until about the 9th of January. Um, toward during the last few days, this goes out for 12. There is a trend here for upper air temperatures to begin to rise a little, but they, the mean of them still still stays pretty low, minus five, uh, right at the end of the run, is below the is, is several degrees below the 30 year average. Um, so it, it, it's a similar picture uh, to what the GEFS was showing us there. What about the rest of the month? Well, one thing I haven't mentioned is that something called a sudden stratospheric warming event, an SSW, is expected to take place during the first half of January. Now, that happens when temperatures in the stratosphere above the Arctic increase rapidly and cause the polar vortex to be displaced or to, to split into two. In turn, that leads to the westerly flow slowing down or even reversing. Now the effects from that propagate down to lower levels in the atmosphere over a period of several weeks and eventually they can lead to the jet stream buckling. If that happens, cold arctic blocks of air can be displaced to mid-latitude locations, for example the UK. Therefore the chance of cold weather is increased significantly when an SSW takes place However, it's absolutely no guarantee. Therefore, forecast confidence for the second half of January is very low, even lower than it usually is at this range. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the 35 day plots to uh, try and get some ideas of what could happen. This one is for London and it's showing upper air temperatures. The key thing to note here is, as, as discussed earlier, they stay below the 30 year average during the first third of the month. They then begin to trend upwards. And on this particular plot, by around the 20th, 
they are touching and just dip and, and just climbing above a 30-year average. So it is it is suggesting a transition to less cold or milder weather around during the, during the middle third of January. But as I said, confidence is very low. Now, towards the end here, during the last few days of January, what we can see is temperatures, 850 HPA temperatures beginning to dip again, and that trend continues into early February. It could be starting to show the effects of the SSW. It's very, very difficult to, to make a judgment on that. If I just scroll down and show you the two metre temperatures for London during a 35 day period. So, so these are the ones that we experienced down at the surface. What we can see is they, they stay below the 30 year average until the 11th of January. They then begin to climb but remain rather low. And it's around again about the 18th or 20th of January, the 21st, where they hit the 30 year mean and just climb above it, at least for a period of time. On, on this particular plot, we see them dipping towards the very end again as we go into February. If I take a look at the Glasgow plot, you can see a similar pattern. However, the warming trend is not so marked. And in actual fact, the mean of all the runs in the model remains below the 30 year average throughout the 35 day period. Again, that adds some weight to the possibility of milder conditions trying to push up from the south or southwest, but not making it into the, uh, into the northern half of the UK. However, as I said, it's a very, very, very uncertain picture during the second half of January. I'll quickly take a look at the bigger picture. This shows 850 HPA temperature anomalies across Europe. The week beginning Friday the 22nd of January. Blues indicate below the 30 year average and reds above it. And what we can see there is there's some red shading across the southern half of the UK. Blue shading is still covering the north. So again that indicates the possibility of milder conditions across the southern half of the UK with a greater chance of it staying uh, colder in the north fits in with uh, what I was discussing earlier. If I jump a week ahead, Friday, this is week beginning Friday the 29th of January. By then, the blue shading is once again covering all of the UK, indicating the potential for it to turn colder once again. That is obviously a very, very long way off, and it's um, by no means certain. OK, to summarise, early January is looking cold with wintry showers and sharp nighttime frosts. There is a possibility of longer spells of rain, sleet and snow at times. During the middle third of the month, temperatures may recover, particularly in the southern half of the UK. Beyond that, there is a possibility of it turning quite a lot colder again, and with that, the chance of snow increases. However, forecast confidence becomes very, very low and it's by no means certain the colder conditions will return during the late stages of the month. So there we have it. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please hit the subscribe button and give it a like. By doing those things, you'll be notified when I publish future videos and updates. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.